President. Senator from Illinois. Mr. President, 10 days ago, America lost a visionary public official, and I lost a friend. He was 97 years old. His name was Newt Minow. He was 35 years old in the year 1961 when President John Kennedy tapped him to chair the Federal Communications Commission. At the time, Americans were in, involved in a big change, moving from their radios to this new thing called television. In his maiden speech as FCC commissioner, Newt Minow famously described much of commercial television as, quote, a vast wasteland. He was especially concerned about the effects of endless commercials and violent cartoons and other programs on the minds of our children. He said the public airwaves should serve the public interest, and the FCC should use its power to ensure that this emerging new technology of television met that standard. Mr. President, fast forward six decades. Social media now fills the role that broadcast TV once did in the lives of our kids. Yet federal laws currently allow social media companies to endanger our children with near total immunity. Social media companies can and regularly do sell children's personal information for profit, allow bullies to hound children mercilessly, and allow drug dealers and sexual predators to hunt for child victims on their platforms. And our laws, as they're currently written, as we have currently written them, make it nearly impossible for victims to hold these companies accountable. This has to change. The Senate Judiciary Committee is taking bipartisan action to see that it does. Virtually every parent I know is concerned about how much time their kids spend online looking at screens, how it's affecting them, and the dangers that kids can stumble into. Parents have a right to be concerned. Look around the next time you're at a grocery store or a mall or a family restaurant. You'll see kids transfixed by smartphones and tablets. I've seen this happen. I'll bet the presiding officer has seen it. Many kids learn how to scroll before they learn how to walk. I know two children in New York who are quite adept at navigating the online world. They're 11 years old. Their parents have talked to them about the dangers lurking online. Both parents monitor their kids' screen time as much as they can, but they still worry that they're missing dangers. I know these children because they're my grandchildren. My wife and I visited them recently, and I sat down with my grandkids, and I asked them, what do you know about staying safe online? Well, they both assured me they knew all about it, Papa. They all knew all the danger signs to steer clear of. But Mr. President, we cannot continue to place the responsibility for protecting children online entirely on these children, even their parents, and even child advocacy groups alone. No matter how concerned and vigilant they are, parents stand virtually no chance against social media companies that use powerful algorithms to hook kids to make profit off of them, and we cannot be held accountable in a court of law for harm that their products cause. Well, Democrats and Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee want to change that. Over the last two weeks, we have voted out of our committee a package of four bipartisan bills that would require Facebook, Snapchat, and other social media companies to adhere to new online safety standards for children or pay a price. And the price would be anything from significant fines to civil judgments to criminal prosecution. I say enough is enough. Last Thursday, the Judiciary Committee voted unanimously to advance a bill I'm sponsoring called the Stop CSAM Act. CSAM stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material. Before I go any further, I want to say a word about this 23-member committee. We have some pretty strongly held political opinions among the membership of that committee, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side. It is rare, if ever, that we agree on everything. But these four bills about social media passed with unanimous roll calls in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Every Democrat 
every Republican voted for them. Sadly, the online spread of vile material is exploding, and it's a call to action for us. It's far beyond the ability of victims, child safety organizations, or even law enforcement to stop under current law. The bill, Stop CSAM Act, that I introduced would protect victims and promote transparency and accountability for social media companies. Here's how it works. Companies that fail to remove child sexual abuse material and related imagery or being notified about them would face significant, after being notified about them would face significant fines. And companies that promote or facilitate online sexual exploitation of children or host or store child sexual abuse material could face new civil and even criminal penalties. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the recognized national experts, there are an estimated 84 million images of child sexual abuse material on the internet. 84 million. That figure is ex increasing exponentially each year. These images are traded, sold, and shared online around the world. I've spoken to a young woman I'm going to make call Charlotte. Like many naive young people, when Charlotte was 16 years old, she shared intimate images of herself with a man she met online that she thought was a friend. That man then posted those images of Charlotte online. They have haunted Charlotte ever since for more than 10 years. She's attempted suicide three times. She's lost jobs when those images would appear in communities where she was trying to work. The images of Charlotte have been shared around the world. She's endured years of online harassment and abuse because of it. She, her mom, and child advocacy groups have asked social media companies in dozens of nations to take down the images with almost no luck. Charlotte lost a teaching job she loved because of the images. She attempted suicide, as I mentioned. She says she doubts that she'll ever feel safe. Other children and teens have been bullied mercilessly online. Sadly, some have taken their own lives to escape the torment. Mr. President, we had a hearing where some of the mothers came in holding the color photographs of their kids, some who were induced to try choking exercises in their closet, ultimately taking their own lives by hanging themselves. Two weeks ago, our committee passed another child on safety online safety bill, again unanimously. It's called the Earn It Act, and it would modify Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act. Here's why we need it. Section 230 currently shields media companies such as Facebook and Snapchat, with very rare exceptions, from being held accountable when materials posted on their platforms result in harm to kids and others. It gives social media companies a pass and denies their victims their day in court. Section 230 was written when Mark Zuckerberg was in the sixth grade, long before social media existed. It was passed when internet companies were small and struggling. Today, social media companies are some of the richest, most powerful companies in the history of the world. Yet they still benefit from the shield of Section 230 to deny victims their day in court. The Earn It Act eliminates immunity and creates accountability. Its co-sponsors are your colleague, Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut and Senator Graham. Big tech can no longer disregard its role in online child exploitation. Many of the rest of our committee members, Democrats and Republicans, are co-sponsors. I'm happy to be one of them. We also passed two additional child online safety bills in our committee, the SHIELD Act and the Project Safe Childhood Act. Senators Klobuchar and Cornyn are the lead sponsors of both bills, and both of them have bipartisan sponsorship. We can and we will balance the need to protect free speech and the need to protect our kids from harm. What we will not do is accept the status quo where some social media companies continue to destroy lives and make vast fortunes by exploiting a legal loophole that can no longer be justified. We hope our colleagues will join us in protecting America's children and teenagers from online harm.